and it's been a long time coming and the biggest build up uh, to the podcast ever. But welcome back to Kicking Back Podcast with Hayley and Drisco. My name is Hayley Miller and I'd love the fans to know that it's not my fault that it's been about 10 years since the last <laughs> podcast. But Drisco, how are you feeling? Yeah, boy, oh boy, I'm good to, I'm good. I'm glad to be back. Um, Would you like to fill, fill the fans yeah, in on we why we haven't been around for a while? Yeah, well, I'm just going to throw it out there. It's all Brett's fault. No one else in the room right now. But um, I know Brett does a lot of organising here, but it's just not good enough. He really um, just did put it down the priority list, didn't oh he? Oh, God, yeah. We've been thrown to the back end. And even today, you know, he's he's upstairs having drinks with the staff, arancini bowls, sausage rolls thrown around. Didn't Can't bring, believe it. Didn't bring any down. No, ridiculous. Anyway, um, we won't mention that it was actually your fault last week that we weren't here, but there was a couple oh no, of hiccups. earlier this week. Sorry. Hiccups, a few hiccups, a few hiccups. Anyway, yeah. we are here, <laughs> and we're going to have a good time today. <laughs> we're going to put that behind us. Emma, do you have a story to tell us about Nathan's new car? Yeah. So today, Kick us off. had a day off. Nathan had a day off too. Don't know how he got a day off, but whatever. Um, anyways. Well, he's probably at the staff party. Yeah, probably. Yeah, that's exactly right. Just come from there. Thought he'd buy a new car. Little does he know his um, older sister's been saving up her money for two years now <laughs> because the old i30s had the engine light on for the last 10 months. <laughs> Just replaced four new ty- four tyres. I've also had the head gasket blown. If anyone, I didn't really know cars, but the head gasket's like a main part of a car. You yep. need it. Yep. Um, so, yeah, if anyone deserves a new car, I really do think it's me. Um, but obviously, there's a bit of a discrepancy in pay, so <laughs> can't actually afford that. Also, I'm at uni. Also, double standards, mum and dad. I hate you sometimes. <laughs> kidding, kidding. Cut that out, Brett. That- <laughs> <laughs> Love you, mum and dad. Biggest support, but double standards for the brothers. It's okay, ridiculous. so the moral of your story here was... Nathan got a new Mm. car and you didn't. Yeah, but also the new car, okay, like I look at a, you know, look at a car and think you don't need to spend $40,000 on a car at 18 years old. That is the most ridiculous thing ever. What car did he get? Well, he was tossing up between a Hilux and a Ranger, my God. (laughs) What did he go with? He went with the Ranger and it's got a stupid snorkel thing on it, some like that. It's all decked out with stuff on it. I don't know about full drive. It's got a lift thing. It's lifted. Big wheels, you know, so that's, whatever. So that's not what you're going to be able to get Spare on the your thing. Um, he thought last week paycheck? I'm going to get a new car. No, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, not. I wouldn't be able to even afford one of the afford one of the parts on the car. Just one tire. Yeah, one tire. <laughs> Literally, what's that about? Two grand. <laughs> <laughs> All right, feels like a lifetime ago, but our previous guest, Kate Starr, give us a give us a review. Um, I think the general consensus going around was that Kate was very interesting. I think a lot of the um, people that listened to the podcast said she was good, and I agree. Um, it was quite a long one again, but um, it's fine. I know how She's... you like the really long podcast. <laughs> she has lots to talk about, that woman. Um, <laughs> I reckon I'm just going to go a seven. And uh, for everyone, I just know that Drisco said that purely because she didn't want Kate to tell her off about it. I think she was probably aiming for a five and a half because <laughs> she didn't want to. She wanted to go worse than Tia. <gasps> <Yeah>! <laughs> Oh. Nothing safe. If you want to talk about this before the podcast, it's you, sh- you be probably sad. shouldn't. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> now we're very, very excited to get our next guest guest on. Should mm. we bring her in? Absolutely. Let's go. Now, please welcome to the show our favourite defender. It says intercept defender here, but I'm going favourite defender. Drisco's <laughs> kind of, kind of. Um, I've literally underlined <laughs> intercept here <laughs> to make sure Miller said that word. Kidding, JC, you're my favourite too. It's fine. All right. Our favourite our favorite intercept dece- defender in the world, bleh, Janelle Cuthbertson. It was also unusual saying Janelle Cuthbertson. Okay, JC. You said it well. Thank you. I had to really think about it. <laughs> JC, welcome. Thanks, how guys. You, how good. are you feeling? Yeah, good. I'm a bit nervous. There's been a lot of build up for this episode. So, so that was a big intro too to sit through. It was a very through. big intro. I can see why it goes for so long. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there we go. It's half the podcast done. No, happy to be here. Finally. Now, you are one of the best intercept defenders in the comp. You're actually second at the moment. At the moment. What's going on with me today? <laughs> at the moment with intercept um, possessions in the comp. But you only just dropped from first. I'm pretty sure in the last week. So probably just try and elevate that. But, this weekend. but 
the Geelong defender was the one that's gone up to number oh. one, and you know, ball's down there. All the I was going to say yeah, the ball, ball is going down week. there a lot. So we'll basically go with your number one, and you're definitely number one um, in our eyes. Um, how are you finding the season so far? Yeah, enjoying it, really loving it. A um, bit different than last year for me. Like, I feel a bit more comfortable out there, and feel like I, I know my role, and um, really kind of soaking it up and. Having a lot of fun. Not that I didn't have a lot of fun last year, but just, yeah, it's been a really good It's more good fun season. when you get the ball, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And I know what I'm when doing. you look really I know good the rules a bit more. <laughs> <laughs> actually, <laughs> speaking of that, JC last week in training, <laughs> she actually said to us, what happens if if someone kicks it through the goals? <laughs> what happens? No, like going backwards. <laughs> yeah. What happens if we kick it through the goals? So JC, it's just like if you touch it through the goals, mate, it's a, it's a behind. It's a point. I don't know if there's some sort of rule around then, it. Like, we blame, get, a goal, get a goal for the other team. If anyone didn't see on the weekend when um, JC didn't rush the ball through and it was put in the vision afterwards, that one mistake she made, you know, it doesn't make them very often. So you can cop that one, JC. Like, you got away with it, though. Um, you can get away with it. Yeah. It's fine. So we just blamed it on the fact of she didn't like have the knowledge to know that you could just rush it through. I knew, I knew you could rush it through and I probably should have made it a little bit more convincing. But, like, just keep your goal next time. Well, so <laughs> yeah, just, kick like, it through. just kick it through next just time. Slightly walk over the line and come back into play. <laughs> now, what do you think is the difference between, so obviously your um, stats and all that and your, your confidence and everything, is that where you're sort of feeling the difference or is there something else? Have you worked on something over the off season? Tell yeah. us about that. Um, I think probably a combination of things like, I'm, like through the winter, um, through COVID, like I, I watched a lot of footy, um, which just watched a lot of the men's game and um, yeah, just like, just having probably having a better understanding and awareness of the game has helped a lot. Um, and definitely just in training, like I said, I've been able to kind of attack duels a bit more and get stuck in and get involved, um, which has really helped then applying that on the park. So, yeah, probably a combination of things for you, I think, this year. It's been great having you mm. down there, absolutely killing it. Um, obviously, we just spoke out your little mishap on the, on the weekend with the... <laughs> it was one mistake. <laughs> with the one mistake that you made, but um, it was a huge win. How did, how did we feel with that? Drisco? Um, good. I mean, we didn't have the ball a lot um, in the back line down there, but I think we had our goal towards the end, which was to um, reduce some scoring as much as we could so we could keep our um, title in the competition as number one back line. Are you number one back line? We absolutely are. Um, I yep. vouch for that. Yep. Anyway, even, yep. even without the stats. Love you guys. So it was you, good. It was you, make, you make everyone else's job easier. I mean, it's fun kicking goals, so we get a rest yeah. too. <laughs> <laughs> well, there was a few of those on the weekend, so that was nice. Um, playing back at Optus again. Um, did you play in that one last year? No, just I didn't. no. So it was no, your first yeah. time. How did you? How did you find it? Yeah, it was awesome. Um, I think the ground feels a lot bigger because of the like grandstand around, but it's not actually any bigger than Fremantle Oval. Um, I think it was really good to get, obviously, the fans down to Optus and then to follow on with the men's game. That's just incredible. Hopefully we can bring that, like, continue that in the future. It'd be good. It always does seem like, I don't know if it's m- what what the word is, but, like, more important or just, like, bigger oh, when absolutely. you're playing there. Change rooms, everything. We had the eagle. <laughs> eagle went rogue. <laughs> the eagle did go rogue. I get Jason. nervous just driving through the car park. That's, that stresses me out. Like, oh, yeah. Putting the blinkers on and everyone yeah. watching you, like, oh. And I've, drive 10, like, 10 um, k's an hour. Do not go over that. Someone I've will yell at you. driven around Optus three times <laughs> because I just thought I was going in a straight line. But you're actually going around the whole ground <laughs> and every entry and exit looks the same. <laughs> this is true. It all does look the same. It does. I and I know lucky. you're not the only one that's done that. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I had Webby in the car, so she's like, you're going to turn left here? And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, <laughs> no, I was going to. I was, yeah, I was going to. Um, uh, obviously, yeah, going back to the Eagle, for those who, well, I'm sure most people, I don't know if they had it like on the broadcast or anything like that, but to tell the story of basically what happened, well, from obviously we didn't know because we were down on the ground, but we would we were ready to run out and do our um, warm-up and normally down the bottom, there's heaps of people in that room, like like cheering you on, ready to go. But there was no one in there, I assume, because of COVID and stuff. And it was all like dark. And then they had get, let's get loud playing. I honestly felt like I was in a nightclub. Mm-hmm. I don't know about you guys, it was good. but I was like, what's this <laughs> like? It was like clubbing pregame. And then it went on for ages because we weren't allowed to go out until the eagle was under control. <laughs> The eagle was flying around and apparently they had to get all the umpires to stop running around. Yeah. And then the eagle's girls wouldn't stop 
warming up. So then, because they were trying to get them to stop warming up because the eagle was apparently, I don't know, confused or just didn't want to have a bar of it. They that reckon day. that they need a, like a really big crowd there for the eagle to know where to land <laughs> because it gets scared of the people yeah, it got to, in the crowd. Yeah, right. But there was like not a big crowd. Not a, yeah, there was not enough people. So it just was like, oh, this is a nice spot to stop. <laughs> that is great. Uh, Imagine being the handler. How embarrassing. He had to go up and get it. Apparently there's three Aussies. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. <laughs> oi, oi, oi. <laughs> there is, though. Three eagles called Aussie. Would you well, believe you call it and tell them different? <laughs> All right. Anyway, going back to the actual the actual game, oh. Turbo winning um, three from three on the BOG medals. Should we should we name it after her yet? Oh, absolutely, yes, JC. Absolutely, 100%. Mm. You've got to. Well, we, three, I, don't, I wonder if there's been... Anyone consecutively win one three? I think there has been Surely one men's not. player. I think someone did, but I saw it on social media. Not a female, there, but though. if she wins one more, no, not a female, obviously, because there's only <laughs> been three. <laughs> we she's won all of the possible ones so far. Perfect. Name it after her. <laughs> then. Name it after the inaugural. <laughs> Fair enough. Good point. Um, I was going to say here it says. Um, Talk about the winning the winning speeches. I don't even. Didn't I wouldn't even have it. I was going to say I didn't hear any of it, so I wouldn't know what they actually said, except for when they just turned to us and yeah, started fun. yelling, <laughs> woohoo, yes, good job. <laughs> I'm like, good job, Turbo. <laughs> no idea what you just said, but I'm with you. Surely um, they could hear it in the crowd, though. Like we might not be able to hear it on the ground, but they could hear it in the, the crowd. Broadcast. Do you reckon? You'd think so. No, hopefully. the broadcast didn't have it. Oh, really? No. Oh, they okay. talked the oh, whole wow. way through it. They just had them standing there talking, and then the commentators were talking okay. over. But it. Like, like in the men's the games, then. you can hear like if they speak after the game, or if like for the grand final, for example, maybe they pull out the special equipment <laughs> for the grand final. <laughs> but you can hear you should, from yeah. in the grandstand. I agree. They probably should have had it um, mm. on the broadcast. But well, they did the um, for the last one. I don't know what happened at this this time round. But mm, budget cuts. Um, yeah, <laughs> 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 a couple of weeks down yeah. there to yeah, they spent too much on <laughs> trying to get it on the first time. They were like, nah, we we can't afford that this time. Um, Gemma kicking five goals, pretty good. I feel like. Juddy gave her three of them. Well, if you ask Juddy, that's what Juddy yeah. says. <laughs> she gave her a couple of them. Roxy, two huge marks and goals. I think she ran mark of the mark of the round mm, the or week, something like yeah. that. It was pretty good. Um, and obviously Duffy kicking three goals as well. The forward line was absolutely killing it. Um, it does help, though, when you just have the number one that, intercept yeah, defender. Yeah, you're getting, you're getting the ball from the back line, you know, number one midfielder. Turbo, um, <laughs> kicking the ball into you, um, lace out. So they have an e- they had an easy job on the weekend. Yeah, I think um, we're back from the bibs this week, aren't we? Mm. Oh, we didn't really have much rough. opportunity. We didn't, we didn't I was just saying, yeah, that's rough though because they only scored one goal. So yeah. who stops them from scoring? Yeah, we can put up, put up you guys, on that one. absolutely. Um, my Haley's heroes three to one votes. I'm going to have to go, even though I just ripped the forwards. I'm going to give Gemma five votes. Five. Five. Three. Wow. <laughs> five goals, three votes. She's giving her all three votes. <laughs> all, all five. She's giving them all of them. They have six votes. <laughs> yeah, there's five, six, six. But good try. Um, good good maths. <laughs> Mental maths. Um, Gemma, three votes. Epps, two. And Kano, one. Mm, I like that. Honourable mentions, obviously, Turbo, Roxy. Mm. And then my other honourable mention is... Mim over here. Oh, yeah. Because I think he did. Amazing. He had so many, like, almost marks. I watched it back and I was like, yes. Like, no, I couldn't hold any until the last quarter. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> glad I marked him in the last quarter because I would have walked off pretty unhappy. I was like, but your stats would have been, like, really amazing. Like, obviously you don't get a stat if you sort of half mark it, bring it to ground and someone else picks it up. But you were still, just because you weren't marking it, you were still but impacting it and needed. stopping it from yeah. going any further. So obviously the stats don't show it as much, but you were very influential in that okay. chop-off role, which made, you say, intercept yeah. ruck here. Number one, from me. Yeah. I was saying, <laughs> Sorry, number one Jason. intercept ruck here. Um, yeah, she, she took that. That's maybe why you That's dropped down one. from I number mean, one. I'm so Come sorry. Mean, <laughs> stop being so good. Um Back to you, JC, and your journey. Tell us about oh, before I can't footy. Wait for this. 
we were talking about this just before mm. you, you got here, um, that everyone obviously knows that you played tennis beforehand, but we know nothing about it. Yep. So please start from the start mm. and give us a breakdown. When of you're your one years career. old. Like, start. <laughs> it, a long yeah. time ago. Well, okay. Give us like a short version of <laughs> so all of it. Don't you start like tennis coaching really young though? Like you yeah. can start. So I've seen Serena Williams' kid. Oh, yeah, she's like this She's going to be amazing. <laughs> she's right. Was that you? No, that was definitely <laughs> Um yeah, so I started playing tennis when I was seven. So I grew up, um, so I've got an older brother. He's three years older than me and he um, grew up playing soccer and tennis as well. So I just naturally kind of followed doing what he was doing and wanted to just follow him pretty much. So, yeah, I remember when I was um, like too young to play soccer, I used to get the, when it was mum's turn to take the strips home from soccer and wash them. So I used to get his out the washing machine, put it on and put his soccer boots on and run around the front oh, garden. So cute. Bless. Um, and then we had like a big, massive brick wall out, out of our front um parents front house and just used to sit with the tennis racket and tennis ball and just sit there all day and hit tennis balls so yeah started um with the club when I was seven and just kind of naturally uh grew up playing tennis and soccer until I was probably about 12 years old I had to choose between tennis or soccer um if I wanted to take one a bit more seriously than the other and I got told that girls weren't supposed to play soccer um mm, at that ridiculous. time so Class, classic and I didn't really want to go play in an all-girls team because I really enjoyed just kind of running around with the boys and was a bit of a I am was one of the boys I guess you could say <laughs> a bit of a tomboy um so yeah I chose tennis and just naturally kind of went down that pathway instead yeah cool yeah um, <laughs> you're not gonna go any further with that okay, okay I'm, cool I'm um, we've we'll, we'll got questions yeah, we, yeah. it's all right we can go on with that so you're now it says you're a grass court player What's the difference between a grass court player and a different kind of player? What other players are there? <laughs> there's grass, there's hard, there's clay. What's hard? Oh, I didn't know there oh, was. Is that the blue? Just hard court. I just Wimbledon? thought like not. Wimbledon. What are they playing? No, Wimbledon. Wimbledon's grass. grass. That's, that's grass. Why, oh, that's go. why I wrote that's it why. in. Go. I know my tennis, okay. JC. I wrote, I don't think I spelt it right. But <laughs> <laughs> I wrote Wimbledon in because I was like, oh, that's the only grass competition. I mean, have you played in Wim at Wimbledon or not? I haven't played in Wimbledon. I've been to oh, Wimbledon. That would be so um, cool. Yeah, grass just naturally suited my game a bit better. So why, why, <laughs> <laughs> why? Tell us um, why. I my game revolved a lot around my serves. So I had a pretty big serve. Um, I was I'm pretty good at volleying, which a lot of girls are not comfortable at the net. So my game, I was able to kind of take my game forward, move forward to the net, finish off a lot of points at the net, which kind of suits grass a bit better. Mm -hmm. um, I had an okay slice. So I had a bit of variability in my game. <laughs> I love this so much because I'm like, yeah, yeah, this is a awesome. slice and the volley. <laughs> the girls aren't comfortable with the volley. But this girl is. <laughs> um, Continue. So I had some pretty good results on grass courts. Yeah, that's okay, awesome. cool. Yeah. Which is the one that's really slidey? Is clay, that clay? That's clay. That's cool. No good I, go. I don't understand how they don't roll their ankles and that clay destroyed my ankles. Yeah, good. Yeah. But also, you, you may not have played at Wimbledon, but you were. At the Aussie Open as a junior, is that correct? That is correct. Oh, yes. cool. Yeah. Well, tell us about that. See, this is what I wanted to know. Yeah, yeah. So didn't want to hear about you hitting the ball against the wall. <laughs> I as didn't want to hear you slicing. Me. After I, I started, it. So I gave you. After that I you learn how to slice the ball, <laughs> <laughs> then what happened? Um, so yeah, I guess as a as a teenager, um, I get yeah progress through the the junior pathway. And is this um, in Perth? Uh, well, you have to have a world ranking. So you, you play tournaments all over the world. You got a world yeah. ranking? What's your yeah. world ranking now? Where did you Where finish up? <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, now you probably retired. don't have one. Um, um, what was your best world ranking? So I was 150 in the world for juniors. Um, yes. And then I was 1,000 in the world in the women's before I went And how many people play this? <laughs> this? How many people play this thousands. thing called tennis? <laughs> no, like there would be... Yeah. Millions of people would Millions, play tennis. Thousands. That's um, insane. Yeah, it's not just as easy to kind of turn up to a tournament and go, oh, I'm here, to, I'm ready to play. Like, <laughs> you have to have a ranking to qualify. So for did you do, um, like, I know, obviously, I'm just referring to the sports I know, like um, state teams, like, or state league teams, yeah. state teams, national teams. Is that, like, how it works, yeah, kind sort of. of? Tennis is obviously a little bit different because it's more individual. Mm -hmm. but, so oh, we, yeah, teams. Yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> like, there was state teams and things like that yeah, that yeah. travelled. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so you had a, a junior world ranking, which then qualified you for certain tournaments. So cool. we were generally, so I was part of the, the state squad um, at Tennis West and in the Tennis Australia program. So that, but all that, so we trained, I guess, as an academy mm -hmm. um, down at Burswood. And then, yeah, essentially you sit down at the beginning of the year with your coach and look at the calendar year, look at where, predict kind of where your ranking is going to be throughout the year and as to what tournaments you want to qualify for. Um, and then where you can kind of fit your training blocks in within that so 
everyone kind of thinks tennis is pretty glamorous, but I can tell you it's not glamorous mm. at all. Which one's harder to train for, tennis or footy? Um, it's very different. Different, like, yeah. It's so You're different. just going to say that. Yeah, it's sport really versus compare. individual. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I mean it's sport. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, cut me off. <laughs> <laughs> Team versus individual. Yeah. Sorry, everyone. Um, so, yeah, when I was 17, I played in the Junior Aussie Open, So, which was, yeah, a phenomenal experience. was played in the second week of the Grand Slam. So you get to be around all the all the players oh. and, you know, walking through the halls with your accreditation. Like your idols. Who was yeah, the coolest so I, person I remember, that was there? Literally, like, as soon as I walked in to get my accreditation, it was with mum and dad. For me, I've kind of, I think about, like, the Sarah Barrier, like when she gets drafted to Fremantle, like that's her dream. That's like she's worked for her life. For me, getting my accreditation, that was that for me. Um, mm. So I remember getting it and Serena and Venus Williams were like literally right there. And I that's was just so like cool. nearly fell over because I was like, oh my that's God, ridiculous. Right in front of me. Yeah. Um, and she's also very scary. But I'm sure she's a lovely, she's a lovely person. I'm sure, sure she's a lovely. Do you have you ever talked to her? I was a ball kid for her when I was a kid. <gasps> at, like, that's McCarthy. all so cool. So, yeah. Surely you have a photo then. I don't. No, oh, I would no. love to. JC, do you still have contacts? <laughs> with Serena Williams. Yeah, with, with Serena Williams. Yeah, I just give her a call every now, now and then. I've How got go an inexperienced <laughs> ball girl here that would love to. No, I would love that. That uniform and the girl. socks and the, the hat. Long limbs. Oh, yeah. Scoop it up. Yeah. Away I go. Keep running. <laughs> and keep running. What are, the, what are some of the best awards or honours? So obviously you just you talked about playing yeah. at um, the Junior Oz Open. What is obviously that? Is that your number one? Would that say your number one thing? Or it's definitely a highlight for me because yeah. that was like, yeah, it's a junior. Like a lot of the people that go through and win junior grand slams, mm-hmm. they're generally the people that make it into you know top twenty, top ten in the world in professional tour. So you get exposed to a lot of the good, the best juniors in the world. Um, essentially, um, probably some other highlights for me. I was a bit of a late bloomer in tennis. Like I was never the top like one, two, or three player in the state. Like I was always probably around five or six. So. For me, I think it was about 16 roughly and I won a couple of um, international tournaments up in Darwin and had a f- kind of results kind of st- started to click for me. So there's a couple that stand out and then definitely going over to college and playing over there and playing, um, you know, some tournaments over there and um, the college system. Yeah, so there's a few like highlights that definitely stand out, but Aussie Open would, would for sure be one of them. So just going back to your journey, you played – um, obviously growing up as a junior and got your like national ranking. Yeah. Did you play in the Oz Open before you went away to college then? Yes, yeah, so yeah. I played um, in the junior Aussies when I was 17. Okay. And then moved over to Texas when I was 18. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Now tell us about that. Like how long did you live in America? Tell us about that college experience. Yep. So is it like the movies? It can be if you want it to be. <laughs> it's, uh, it's what you make it. Um, <laughs> what did you make it? Oh, look, I was a professional athlete, so I kept it very professional. <laughs> Yawn. <laughs> Yawn. <laughs> um, how did that Lol. come about? So <laughs> She's only joking. She just has to say the right answer <laughs> on the podcast. D- yeah. we'll, we'll get into we'll that get into story that after. Um, yeah, so when I was 17, I, I guess I was weighing up my options. Like I said, tennis is is not glamorous. It is pretty hard. You have to have some money behind you to fund, you know, traveling for the year. And, um, as a junior, you're not earning any money. So you, it's really just relying on mum and dad to kind of fork mm. out the money. Um, so my plan was at that point to the college system then was quite new to Australians. Now it's very popular across a lot of sports, but I spoke to my high school, um, tennis coach and she'd been over there and I talked about it and I was like, you know, I didn't know anything about it. So I was like, what is it? What's involved? Um, and for me, I really had no intentions of going to university after school. Like I was so focused on tennis. So I thought about it and then in pretty much, I worked with Tennis Australia to say, yep, I'm interested. You know, what's the process? What do we need to do? Put out, I guess, put a bit of a profile out there to say I was interested. And then, yeah, the offers kind of just came streaming in. And then I guess to cut a long story short, for me, the decision came about was I thought I'd use college. Um, they've got amazing facilities, amazing resources over there the it's a division one system nca double a system um it's very competitive so i thought that's a really good opportunity for me to a get a degree um i was gonna say did you actually study i did you just went there to play tennis i went there for tennis and got a degree on the the side so got the degree um want to just use their facilities use their resources the coaching to get some really good match play under my belt for those four Mm -hmm. years and then look to get back on the professional circuit after that um things didn't really go to plan as 
as I ever do. Um, mm. But yeah, so that's how I guess I came about. So I went, um, they paid for me to do, to go over there with my dad and spend 48 hours on five different college campuses. Um, and from there, I was able to make a decision as to where I wanted to go. So pretty much from July, I went over there in August for um, to have a look at the schools. And then I was there in January, packed one tennis bag and one suitcase and off I went. How long were you there for all up? Uh, it was just under five years. Yeah. Wow. yeah. So it's a pretty decent amount of, yeah. decent amount of time. Yeah, totally good stint. What, um, why did you sort of stop playing tennis and choose to play footy? Was it like an immediate sort of crossover? How much time in between? Yeah. Tell us about that. Um, so it was a fair amount of time. So I stopped, um, well, so I had a year left of my degree in Texas. So, and a year left of my tennis eligibility. Um, I was really struggling with injuries and was having a few issues with my health. So I sat down with my coach and kind of just weighed things up. And I was, for me, I was like, I want to finish my degree. So I knew I wanted to do that. So I was like, I've got a year left, but just tennis. I looked at what it looked like after college. And like I said, it's it's a lot of time on the road. You have to be able to fund it. And by that stage, I was 22, 23. Mm-hmm. Didn't have any money behind me. So um, I was like, yep, yeah, I'll finish off my degree, come home, get my health sorted. Um, so at that stage, I quit trying to pursue tennis seriously. Oh, that was your phone, Drisco. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I just gave her the real, like, dirty eyes and <laughs> she went, whoop, and yep. dropped it in the bag. Discreetly get that yeah. out of the way. <laughs> Sorry, Josie. Um, every week, every oh, week, her phone goes off. system for that. Honestly. Um, yeah, so I was 22 when I made the really hard decision that I'd stop playing altogether. Um finished off my degree and just lived the normal college life for a year. I was like, I've got an opportunity, just want to experience there it. There you go. So, yeah. You did live that college life. Yep, I just Knew it. to be a normal student. Knew it. Um, and then moved home in, so moved back to Perth in 2013. Didn't look at a tennis racket, didn't touch a tennis racket for about three years. Hated it, didn't want anything to do with it. Um, and then I ended up rupturing my ACL playing soccer. And then one of my old tennis coaches came to me and said, oh, you know, would you be interested in coming back to play tennis, just state league? Bit of fun. And I was like, no, nah, couldn't think of any worse. No, thank you. <laughs> like, not interested. And then as I went through my ACL rehab, that for me, I started thinking about it. I was like, oh, it's kind of give me something to work towards, you know. I'll see how I go. Anyway, went and played state league for about four years, um, which took me through to 2019, last year. By that stage, it was January. We were coming into tennis finals. Um, my body was getting – I was having a niggling elbow injury, so I couldn't serve, so I had no game. So I was like – no, nah, this is too hard. Um, I'm getting bored. I want something else. I want a change. So for me, I had to, if I was going to take something up, I had to give something up because I had a tendency to kind of just keep taking on things. Mm. So I was like, right, once tennis season's done, um, that's me. I'm out. I said, let's let's try something new. And I thought about maybe going back to soccer, but I was like, no, nah, I've played that before. Like, I've been there, done that. Let's try something completely new. <laughs> let's Something completely foreign to me. And I was like, AFL, let's do it. Never played it before in my life. Don't know the rules. Never been around it as a kid. Far what around. have I got to lose? It's so, insane. Um, jumped on Google. Just kind of wanted to find my... <laughs> just Googled <laughs> us. Googled us. Oh, I like that. I look, like the look of that purple club. <laughs> I'm going to get Morning. drafted there. I'm going to go there. Um, just found the closest club in the South East Corridor, which was the Perth Angels. And was like, oh, it's quite daunting actually going down to a club and not knowing anyone and I was like, I'll just go down for a kick and just see if I like it and see what it's about. Um, went down and kind of just fell in love with it from that first session. So oh. that's how I, I guess, got introduced to the game. It's and beautiful. Here we are. It's poetic. <laughs> just You're an angel. Love it, for, it was love at first kick. Um, <laughs> I remember, and I think I've told this story in the podcast already, but not with you specifically. You came down to like the academy or whatever um, for Frio and you and I, I don't know if you remember this, but you and I were um, matched up against <laughs> each other doing contested marking and I didn't bloody win one <laughs> contested mark. And I'm you still dirty. You just looked dirtier. at her pipes I'm still, and I'm still dirty about it. This woman needs to come in. Oh, here's me, like real ego, like <laughs> stabbed me in the ego. I was like, this girl, it's like, oh, found out late. I didn't know you were a tennis player. I was like, she plays tennis <laughs> It's not even like comparable, yeah. <laughs> but no, you beat me in every single one and it really so hurt good. my feelings <laughs> Sorry, and I'm Miller. still not over it clearly. But from that moment, obviously I was like, just draft, draft this girl because um, I can't mark over the top of her. So, and clearly no, neither can anyone else because she's a top <laughs> intercept marker in the comp. Except um, Mim. Mim can. Mim, yeah. yeah except, of except when Mim Mim's steals off, them yeah. from you. Um, how was your, like, where, where did the actual Frio part come from? Yeah, so I was, yeah, so it was beginning of 
2019 Waffle W reserve season and my cousin sent me, so I'd been to like three training sessions. My cousin flicked me um, this application for this free amount of rookie search and she goes, oh, you should try out for this. And I kind of looked at her, I was like, are you kidding? Like I've been to three sessions. Um, I've only just found out <laughs> I can kick a football. Uh, probably not, but maybe, maybe <laughs> later. Um, and then it was, I don't know how long it was open for, maybe a couple of weeks or something. And then I went to another session. I was like, oh, I guess I can kind of kick a ball. And it was for athletes that had been at an um, elite level in other sports. So I was like, Perfect. what the heck? I'll just put my name in and, and see what happens, you know. So I did that and I got the email to say, yep, we want to bring you down for a bit of a trial run. So ended up coming down. I don't know how many. There's maybe like 14 or 15 of us come down from everyone's from different sports. Um, and we just pretty much yeah did a couple of drills like very basic just had a bit of a kick and kick and a run um did a 2k that was the first time i've ever, ever done 2k oh, yuck. and that was yeah, that like, was fun it was horrible i know i've done about 100 feet test in my how life how long's the court but tennis, never like never done a 2k so that was very different experience. dynamics um so then from there uh they ended up selecting i think it was maybe two or three of us out of that that group and invited us down to the academy so um, and then she went and destroyed my yeah, ego absolutely. right from there. <laughs> that's, that's how it happened. That's how and I, then you pretty much played waffle and then got, dra- like, well, got drafted. Well, I only well. ended up playing five games. I got injured. So <laughs> I did two weeks of the academy um, and then I started having a bit of foot pain and I've had some stress fractures before and I was kind of like, oh, God, here we go again. This feels very uh, similar oh. to what I've had. So sure enough, took myself to a doctor and had a stress fracture. So mm-hmm. ended up in a moon boot and I remember – I think I emailed Coops and I was like, look, can we just come in and I'll have a chat with you before the, the academy session. I was like, this is where I'm at. Um, like fully appreciate if, you know, don't want me around anymore because there's still like eight weeks <laughs> yeah. to go. Yeah. Um, you know, and he was just pretty much like, look, we're, you know, keen if you want to stay around, that's, you know, it's up to you. And, um, you know, we'll try and get you. So the plan was to try and get me play a waffle game at the back end of the season. So I was like, all right, cool. And for me, it was just, it was a really good opportunity. Like I love being around high performance systems and environments. So I was like, even if I can't train, like I may never get this opportunity again. So mm. I'm just going to stick around and see how you girls train and see what it's about. So came down and um, was grateful that Springer gave up his time every Tuesday night and did some boxing with me, which I thoroughly enjoyed. And yeah, just stuck around and watched you girls pretty much train for, I think it was about, ended up being about seven weeks. Came out of the boot um, I got one more training session in with the academy and then one game in back at Waffle, Waffle W Reserves and then completely shattered my little pinky. Um, mm. <laughs> so I said to the doctor, I was like, can you just splint it up and let me just play the rest of the season? I was like, four games left. He's like, no, absolutely not. So then Coop saw me. He's like, you don't have much luck here, are you? I was like, no. Nah. Like, so for me, I was like, put the draft to bed, put footy to bed this yeah. year. And I was like, I'm, I haven't played enough football. Yeah. Just let's look at 2020. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I guess that's how I came onto the, the radar. <laughs> so then, Broken pinky, stress fractured foot, and then gets and then, drafted. And then got drafted. Yeah, so then boy. You got drafted from that though, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. So you had barely played. Don't you hate those people? They're ridiculous. Just, you know, oh, we'll take a chance on her. She hasn't done anything. <laughs> like, except be a good tennis player. player. I played that whole season. So good. And I'm so <laughs> glad tried Coops, to drafted. See, Coops knows what he's doing because yeah, he, he was like, She's good enough anyway. He we'll take it with all in these you. injuries. I swear we'll they flipped it. a going on draft. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. And we'll take that because it worked out very, very well for us. Okay. Quick fire. My turn. My my time here. Um, I've added two questions. Okay. <laughs> Just to make it even longer. Yeah. Perfect. Good. Okay. Um, what's your strongest tennis shot? Slice. Serve. 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 Okay, Slice. Cool. And oh, following on. Oh. I don't know what that <laughs> following on. <laughs> My question that I've added, what was your fastest serve kilometres oh, per hour? I don't know, maybe 170 Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> That's like what they do at Wimbledon. Should, yeah. Should have played yeah, at Wimbledon. should have. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have put you in. And what has been your most expensive racket? Um, so, yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, She's oh, up. Well, so when I was um, playing juniors, I don't know why, but I had this tendency with my serve, I really struggled to hold on to the racket and I cracked a lot of rackets. Not she through got, anger. She got like $20, $20 Kmart rackets yeah. because she couldn't afford them to get breaking I them every time. I remember I was in New Zealand playing a couple of tournaments and I, I think I broke about five rackets <gasps> in the space of about three weeks oh. and they're 
you know, a couple hundred bucks a pop. Oh. So luckily I had a sponsorship at the time, but I remember I kept ringing up Yonex. I was like, I need some more rackets. I need some more rackets. They're like, what is wrong with you? I was like, it's not out of anger. I just struggled to hold on to rackets. So, um, but most expensive, I don't know, they're a couple hundred bucks or something. Couple of hundred. I think that's being hundred. a bit, $400 you told me. They're not cheap, put it that way. <laughs> okay, perfect. Um, go to coffee order. Just cappuccino, just oh. simple girl. My <laughs> favourite question. Favourite subject back in school besides sport? <laughs> which I There's no besides the sport. Can I tell you my most hated subject? Just change sport. it up. Yeah, hated. Oh, okay. Yeah, good one. Go. Good one. Well, I had tennis as a subject, so that would be my favourite. Well, um. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. You, skipping to the part okay. that you actually said before, what was your most hated subject? Probably drama. I skip drama yeah, every yuck. Friday. Yuck. To play tennis yuck. Instead. I thought you would have loved oh, drama. Oh, I'd be good at it. <laughs> <laughs> Same. I'm, I'm, yeah. No. I'm surprised. I mean, no, I, I don't stop get it. No, I wouldn't be good at that. No, don't. Don't put me in front of a microphone or a <laughs> camera. Please stop. Please. Oh. What are you currently reading at the moment? Um, Matthew McConaughey's book, Green Lights. Good awesome. Book. Is it good? It is a good book. It's interesting. Yep. Great. Recommended. What is the last text message you sent? Uh to you guys telling you I was going to be an hour and seven minutes. <laughs> anyway, she was late. <laughs> Perfect. What is is a dream that you are currently yet to achieve? Oh, I don't want to hear this. This girl gets everything that she these dreams are, of. These are deep this questions. Is, um, no, this is who good, said though. these in? No, no one. Oh, this these, is not the question has oh, been sent okay. in yet. Um, these are just... A dream. I'd love to travel again. Jesus. Mm, <laughs> I mean, where would you want to go? Uh, probably back to Spain, I reckon. Yeah, oh, lovely. Nice. Yeah. Mm. You've already been there, so back there. Cool. Yeah. Look, I'm dreaming. Whatever. I'm dreaming. Well, just because you've travelled the world. Just because you've got a sponsorship. <laughs> you went to Wimbledon, <laughs> basically. <laughs> <laughs> um, describe in one word what it's like having a locker next to Pewie. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> Good. Um, <laughs> um, something you are terrible at. Golf. How? I feel like they're like so similar. That's what my dad says. He goes, how can you hit a moving ball but you can't hit a steel ball? <laughs> I said, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that's golf. so – golf is hard. But. My mum always told me tennis and golf, Em, that's what's going to make you the <laughs> <money>. <laughs> This is true. And now this we're finding true. out tennis is shit. <laughs> <laughs> not glamorous. Not glamorous. <laughs> what <did> you say? <laughs> yes. Not shit, just not glamorous. Not glamorous. Yeah. And final question is three words to describe Trent Cooper. Three words to describe Trent Cooper. Intelligent. He's a smart man. He's honest. He's straight up. Mm, I love that. That's good. And nurturing. Oh, oh great ones. Nice. Absolutely great that ones. great. Now, we've got a uh, few more questions for from our uh, Mims mailbag. No, Mim, we do actually have some Take questions. Take it away. Um, Jackie, who is, of course, Tia Haynes' wife, from one chalky milk addict to another, what's your ultimate favourite <laughs> brand? Masters. Still waiting for that sponsorship. <laughs> There's some in the fridge here that you've stocked up on oh, yeah. <laughs> for after training. <laughs> but she had to pay for them. That's yeah, probably $3 for them. <laughs> Speaking, Speaking of uh, Tia, she asked, why do people grunt in tennis and do you do this? <laughs> I actually question. don't know because... You're like, exerting yourself. Yeah, like sometimes you grunt and you, you, know, you don't mean to. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the one like... Sharapova who like, grants that one. Like, you can't right. tell me that. That's, 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 yeah, you can't yeah, tell me that. That's, just, that's not normal. normal. I feel like on ev- it's a bit ridiculous when it comes on every single like <laughs> hit, on every slice you do, yeah. <laughs> and they give the grunt. I'm like, surely not every time. And they like, don't do it in training. So oh, yeah. I hate yeah. it. It's for the camera. I agree. I don't like it. Not bad. Uh, Ashley Sharp. Give us one. I want to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> 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 give us your best grunt. <laughs> your angriest one. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I feel like that question was just for you, oh, just so good, Golden. <laughs> Ashley Sharp asks, "Would you rather never play football again or never drink chalky milk again?" Oh, oh, that's that's conflicting. Um, never drink chalky milk again. Oh, good. Aww. 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 <laughs> I'd give up chalky milk. Maggie asks, how does it feel knowing that you were in year nine when her and Sarah Varia oh were born? God. Maggie, that's the last car ride you're ever getting. <laughs> Does that make you feel um, a little bit old? Yeah, it makes me feel a little that bit old. So I, I, I'm like a mum to Maggie. <laughs> how old She's were you in year nine? Pardon? Like, how old 15? are you in year nine? Yeah. And yeah. they were born. <laughs> that's, that's pretty bad. There's nothing wrong with that, No, Tracy. it's okay. Hey, it's okay. I like Erin I like, Phillips had this quote on Instagram that she gets better with that. She's like, fine wine. Fine so wine. I'm going yeah. with that. Perfect. Let's go with that. Perfect. I like that. 
T Star Loro asks, do you have any pregame superstitions? No, I actually don't. So I've tried to steer away from this kind of thing. And I actually think I said to Marty last week, I so I actually wore a new pair of bonds for every game this season, apart from last week. Amazing. Because I was like, no, I'm not going to have this superstition. That's bad. And you made a mistake. I know. So, so get, a new pair, new pair. <laughs> get a new pair of bonds each week, thanks. <laughs> so no, don't, I don't. No mistakes. No, no mistakes this week. Chloe says, rumour has it that you used to have a serious ping pong championship at your previous job. How did you go? I'm pretty sure I won that, Chloe, didn't oh. I? <laughs> it's pretty if sure. my memory serves sure. me correctly, it was pretty competitive too. This is good because you can't have an answer back. Poor Chloe. <laughs> Poor Chloe. Poor Chloe. You lost, love. Um, Hayley Miller has a question. She asked, do you shower after game? <laughs> Uh, yes, why? I'll <laughs> oh, tell the story. She's caught her I'll tell you the story. <laughs> we I went. To, one <laughs> we, we, how do you not remember this? Well, Jesse, we went, I can't smell. We it. went to. Oh, my we went, was dirty. Yeah, I remember we this. went to watch. Um, we played. We played <laughs> the, that day, and we went and watched Subi afterwards. And JC is sitting next to me, and she's got blue paint <laughs> smeared all the way down her leg. And I was like, Jesse, <laughs> did you not shower it after takes the game? A lot to scrub that stuff off. Yeah. I don't know, but. Well, yeah. Anyway, she was going glue with on my leg from the tape. Yeah, it's fine, Jane. I showered again when I got home. <laughs> anyway, she was going with. I just didn't scrub my leg, <laughs> but I had a quick shower. <laughs> we gave you, you some. Always, we always do in and out. It's like you need to go home and shower. <laughs> anyway, it's okay, guys. <laughs> she does shower. Everyone. She does shower <laughs> after games. I like the look on your face. Then was like, <laughs> I was what like, on earth? What have I done? <laughs> <laughs> you stink. <laughs> Oh, oh, that would be such a mean way of bringing that up. Uh, Lisa Webb, our assistant coach, asks, are you a better tennis player than Alicia Mollick? Mollick? No. Mollick was pretty elite. <laughs> She's uh, She did a bit more than I did. <laughs> uh, our final question from your locker buddy, Laura Pugh, asks, uh, what song gets you pumped up for a game day? Have to be a uh, body, yoddy, yoddy. <laughs> 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 never knew that yaddy, song, yaddy, and yaddy, now yaddy, 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 everyone yaddy. keeps playing it. And it's what is it? The only Kirby reason crazy. I know it is because Maggie put it on Something repeat like in my car for an hour. <laughs> of course she did. Such a, such a Maggie thing to do. Um, well, that's that's it for Mim's mailbag. Thanks, Mim. Fantastic job. Um, we're obviously heading away to Melbourne this weekend. How are we feeling about the big match up against Carlton? Excited. Um, looking forward to getting away. It's going to be. A quick trip in and out, but um, I think it's gonna be a bit cold. It is, it's gonna be Melbourne. like a max of 16. Yeah, do they have long sleeves there? At oh, like, boy, oh, we should have, to. yeah, we should put in that request. I think you have to put that request in about three seven. years ago okay. if you want a long sleeve. <sighs> we'll work on that. Mm. I hope it um, doesn't rain anyway. just for the for my hair. Let's hope it doesn't rain. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <gasps> the bird's nest. <laughs> let's we hope. don't want to see me in a bun, so we don't need that. No rain, we don't need that. Um, well, we haven't actually come up against them since the um. Prelim final 2019, neither of you would have played no. in that no. um, back then. That was not a fun time. So mm. I hope it goes very different to what we had um, that game. We've got a f- big few weeks coming up against three um, Victorian teams. How are, we, how are we feeling? Yeah, I think it'll be a really good challenge for us. Um, you know, it's been an interesting season. We've had a few games at home, which has been really nice in front of the Purple Army. But, yeah, I think it'll be nice to go away and see how we – Stand up against um, some some really good teams that are in good form as well um, at their home ground yeah. and be a really good opportunity for us. I think yeah, opportunity will be amazing, especially the fact that we get to have the pre. pre- oh, I can't. Get, <laughs> I actually just can't today. <laughs> have Continue. the privilege of being able to fly in and out at the moment, and I think obviously with COVID everything changes. So just making the most of what we can at the moment, and um, hopefully if we win the next few games, we can have a. Finals game of footy here that in Perth. Nice. Um, yeah, and we're only there for like 24 hours. Mm. We're in, straight in and out, which will be, I guess, good um, when you just get that quick weekend turnaround, then we're back in Perth and, and ready for the next week. And so. I think with like fatigue as well sometimes, like what if you're waiting around for too long, whereas I know that we'll, we'll get there, you know, go to sleep, get up, we play a game, you know, and then we can – Get home and rest then. Absolutely. Well, we have to quarantine. We have to quarantine till uh, midnight when we come back. So, no, no going out after the game, guys. Um, well, that's that's it um, for the the podcast for this week. Did you enjoy yourself? I did, JC. Thanks for me, guys. Was it as bad as what you thought it was going to be? I never said it was going to be bad. No. Some people get nervous. I'm just glad we got one in. Anyway. You know. Yeah. 
Well, <laughs> enjoy this podcast because you never know when the next one's coming. <laughs> you it's know, a bit like COVID. COVID. And all. It's a bit like COVID. You never know when Ever the next case world. is coming. Well, you never know when the next podcast is going to pop up. <laughs> but we'll, um, we're off to Melbourne, obviously, to take on Carlton. We'll be back home next weekend at Frio Oval. So we can't wait to see you all there. Thanks so much for listening. See you later. Bye. Bye.